الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أولي العمر منكم and always a reminder for myself أنا عبدك العجيس الضعيف والمسكين الظالم الجهل and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us this beatific faith and Allah's ni'mat and blessings upon us to put in immense love within our hearts. It's only a, a gift of God, the gift of Allah's grace that this love enters into the heart of the servant. This events that are coming in on Muharram for the realities of Ashura and Karbala and the door, every Prophet had a door of salvation and Prophet's door the greatest. And the reality that Prophet gives is that we are the door of annihilation in which the servant learn to sacrifice, sacrifice oneself and everything about oneself from the family, from lives, from everything about our lives is to sacrifice in the way of Allah and that Prophet teaches us by example of his holy family. That Ashura and the depth of the meaning of Karbala and the events of Ashura and the martyrdom of Imam Hussain and 72 of the family and holy companions. Fadain, those whom wanted to give their lives for that reality. This life of ours is about following the haqq of Allah that the greatest Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The greatest truth of Allah is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad There is no greater truth. Allah will never be known, is a hidden treasure and Allah, Allah left for us. I'll leave for you like a treasure, if you find it you'll find my greatest truth my purest truth, a truth in which I created all this creation from that reality. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted for us to take the ways of tariqah, the way of Gnosticism, the way of marifa, and that it was taught to us that that reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah's truth, Allah's haqq is Hayyu al Qayyum. Haqq, ha, qaf, 
در حال حی قاف از قیوم and that Allah's eternal oceans and self-sustaining realities is the reality of a soul, one soul. خلق الانسان الواحد نفس الواحد that we created this insan from one, from one light, one soul and that's Allah's greatest truth. And the most purified reality is the Muhammadan reality in which everything is created from Nur al-Muhammadi As a result of that light the greatest gift that Allah can give to his slave and servant is to take them in the way of Gnosticism, the way of Marifa and the, the greatest gift is to learn about the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then take them into those oceans and into those lights and into those blessings to dress them and bless them. When we establish that that is the highest reality then we understand every struggle in our life is to reach that because Allah makes it more defined for people whom are Gnostic and wanting to reach. There's knowledge that a kindergartner has, there's knowledge that a high school student has, there's knowledges that if you have a master's degree then some have PhDs and even above. The knowledges are never the same. So these are knowledges above the level of PhD that teaching us that when Allah wants to really give a gift, He gives the servant the taste, the light and the beatific reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah That is the highest goal that can be achieved for insan. That Allah bestow upon the servant hikmah and wisdom of the salihin, ilm al laduni wa hikmati bi salihin. The hikmah of salihin is all the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result Allah gives to us this is the highest you can achieve. If we understand that that's the highest then we understand what shaitan is trying to do. Shaitan's whole interest is to block people from that reality. When at every goal he's going to take somebody down, they passed a certain field, they went to halfway across the field, they went to three quarters of the way. But each level that the servant is trying to reach of realities, shaitan's biggest fear is that they enter into the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah That's the haqq of Allah the truth of Allah Only by that reality the servant can begin to even enter the understandings of Divinely realities. Without the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and not, not the way common people, oh I accept Muhammadun Rasulullah said, so, no it's all the, these teachings of marifa that you have to enter into that light, you have to love Prophet more than you love yourself. As a result your light has to be diminished and extinguished and what survives within you and revived within you is the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah that in their tahiyyat, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibahu wa rasuluh. And that they no longer exist. And what exists within them is Muhammadun Rasulullah This is the highest reality that the servant is asking. Ya Rabbi take me into the oceans of Muhammadun Rasulullah into the reality of tawheed. If we're not reaching we didn't even begin to understand what tawheed is. 
the reality of La ilaha illallah, there is nothing but Allah and all that can be understood for creation is in Muhammadun Rasulullah Everyone else is just a bystander watching. The way of marifah is Allah to take us into that ocean, dress us from that reality in which you vanish and what exists within your soul, within your wujud, within your heart and all your being is Muhammadun Rasulullah to become Muhammadiyoon and ashiqeen and muhibeen wa minhi wa minhum. The Prophet to say, minhi wa minhum, that don't you know that he came from my life? And don't you know that I exist within his being? That if Prophet would sit with us because his humility would never say, but imagine that he would say to us that, you all exist from my light and your very existence is a sign of my light. That I reflect myself through all of you. Then imagine these lovers, these family members, these companions whom they surrendered their entire being and they were walking examples of minhi wa minhum, that He is from me. That what you see of His reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah they are the flowers of my garden, of my paradises, the essences of my being and my reality walking amongst you, moving amongst you, fiikum all around you. And if you love them and know them, you would have seen me within them. This is the way of Gnosticism that the highest goal the highest reality was to reach to Muhammadun Rasulullah because the door was of humility. Ya Rabbi how am I going to know you? How am I ever going to draw close to you? When you're humble and you know your filthiness and you know who you are, you would never even think like that. But Allah gave to us that you, you love Muhammadun Rasulullah Haris alaykum bil mu'mineen huwa ra'ufun raheem that he should have thrown us all out but he's kind and gentle to the believers and filled with love for the believers, knows their sins, their wrongdoings and their shortcomings and says to us, don't worry Allah gave me a lot, I don't need anything from you. By coming to Muhammadun Rasulullah there's no fee, there's nothing that Prophet needs from us. That Allah has already given and that's why we call Rasulul Kareem the most generous of souls that is not in need of anything from me, just come to me and I will give to you what Allah has given to me, dress you, bless you, pray upon you, ask Allah's forgiveness for you, come into this ocean of love and muhabbat and ishq. Let the Muhammadan light enter into your heart, enter into your soul, begin to struggle for you within your light. That if the ishq and the light and the love of Prophet begin to enter into the soul, it begins to fight on our behalf because Prophet is always victorious. 
me I'm always defeated. The light of Prophet is victorious. When a servant enters into Bab al-Muharram, Bab al-Tawbah and finally admits to themselves, Layla anta subhanika inni kuntum min ad-dalimeen, Ya Rabbi glory to you for I'm an oppressor. And the world became too difficult for my own better. And I can no longer fight myself. And I realize that I'm nothing and I have no ability, I have no strength. I haven't even the strength to pray, Ya Rabbi having the strength for anything. Then we understand what Allah has given. We said before, why when they call the azan we say, La hawla wa la quwwata. Because Allah knows. Common Muslims should learn that you're saying there is no power and there is no strength when they're calling the azan. Means the very basic act of worship Allah's giving to us that you can't even pray without my permission. If I don't give you strength and I don't give you permission you cannot even get up for your salah. You can't do any worshipness without Allah's Divinely permission. Means that's the, the complete understanding of this gate of humiliation and humility. Ya Rabbi I can do nothing without your support. That if you grant me support, that you grant me this light, that you grant me your nazar. And when Allah wants to grant the support to the servant, He sends them the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And with their zikr, with their awrads, with their majlis, with their practices, everything that they're doing, then they live a life of putting their faith in action. That I have to go out and do what I've been taught. I have to show Sayyidina Muhammad my immense love, my immense appreciation. He gave me a seat at that table and what am I going to do with it in my life? As a result of that love, as a result of that ishq, this light begin to emanate within the heart of the servant. As a result of that light and of that love they begin to understand that wherever that truth is, Shaitan is very angry. Wherever that truth is, is illuminating and residing, Shaitan and his Yazid are always upset. That was the role of Yazid, that was the role of Shaitan in the fields of Karbala. That this haqq from the bloodline of Sayyidina Muhammad is illuminating where I don't want illuminated. And if this haqq resides and, and stays within this then that shaitan comes and says, I don't want this, I don't want this light amongst us, go after him. And as a result the very people whom thought that they were praying and fasting and doing their Islam, they did an Islam without the reality and the understanding of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that became the immense danger and the significant importance of today. That he was not killed by Jews and Christians, he was killed by people whom were professing, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah but they were devoid of Muhammadun Rasulullah They were devoid of light, of love, of any any reality towards the reality of Prophet and that became an empty Islam, became an empty Islam. 
And that's the danger in every, every moment of our life that this world is filled with Yazids. This world and shaitan knows that this light of Muhammadun Rasulullah is the greatest threat, is the greatest light, is the greatest reality. At every means stop it, at every means block it. And that's where we take and what we take home from Ashura. What we take home from Ashura is that everybody has a Yazid within them coming against Sayyidina Muhammad coming against anyone who represents a Muhammadan light, the propagation of this ishq and this love of Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Companions. Anyone propagating that with love and correctness, the Yazid within people arises. They make comments on the videos, they, they send emails through the association. Do you think that, that that's something from the heavens coming against or it's a Yazid? So when you look at these events of Karbala and people say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, how that could happen? Turn around look at yourselves and say, it happens every day when you make a bad comment. It happens every day when you're thinking something not correct about the Ahlul Bayt and representatives of Sayyidina Muhammad and these people know who they are. And they think to themselves that they are practicing Islam. The Islam they practice is the Yazidi practices that were on the other side of that battlefield, calling azan and then killing the family. Then you can see how the polar opposites of marifa and Gnosticism and what happens when someone has no spirituality. The religion they practice becomes dangerous. The practices that they practice don't enter into the heart and as a result of a religion that doesn't enter the heart and practices that don't enter the heart, the character can be overrun by shaitan. And they become critical, intolerant and angry and as a result everywhere on this earth is Karbala. That's why when in the news you hear and you see events that you can't imagine, what, what kind of Muslims would go into that field and do like this? What kind of person would do like this? And that's the danger of those whom don't subscribe to tariqahs and spiritual paths in which a shaykh to rightly guide them that you have to have love and ish before you can think that you understood anything of the Divine. You have to understand and love Sayyidina Muhammad and the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah to enter the heart of the believer. The khuluq and the character, when the light enters into the heart of the believer, the character and the, the mannerisms of Prophet begin to overwhelm and dominate that individual soul. And that's what Prophet was meaning, O minhi wa minhum, that he is from me, means that the love I have for him, his Allah from my light has put in light into his heart and into his soul. And when you look at him with that love, you will have seen me, you will have seen me. If you talk to him, you will have heard me. Everything about that individual is a reflection of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's a, it's a great depth of ishq and love. And that's what was meant in this religion. That Allah meant for people to stop, to meditate, to contemplate, to enter a path of love. When these nights are coming that are very heavy and very sad, that how did they not see this light within the holy face, the birds of paradise, Imam and Hussain is salam. How did they not see within the family members, these are all the lights of Muhammadun Rasulullah But you know that jealousy 
blocks the nafs. When people become jealous they become very dangerous. As a result of jealousy it blocks them from seeing the miraculous nature that Allah has given. They say, why he has a light and I don't have that light? Why he has an attraction and I don't have that attraction? And they enter into a field to go out and to kill them. And it's hasad and the shaitan and pride and all the bad characteristics that lead people on a daily basis to come against the Ahlul Bayt, come against the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah that don't think we're left alone on this earth and this is a fable of old times. At every moment there are 124,000 awliyaullah who represent the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and over 500,000 true lights of Ahlul Bayt illuminating the earth that they represent the light and the, the reality of Ahlul Bayt illuminating upon this earth. And their good character, their good mannerisms bring so much blessing upon this earth. And Allah given Holy Qur'an fiikum that Prophet is amongst you. Means then only those who take a spiritual path understood that. That this light is you be with whom you love. When we have a love for them, they have a love for us, they accompany our being at all times. For love never leaves you alone, love never leaves you alone. Those whom you love are eternally around you, praying for you, blessing you. We think about them periodically and bring a cake and food and goods and as a result of this love they have attached themselves to our souls and they are continuously praying for us, continuously guiding us, continuously pushing goodness within the heart and abstinence from bad and abstaining from evilness. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us and bring down the Yazid and the badness and the bad character that blocks us from this ni'mat, from this blessing, blocks us from the lights and the blessings and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Allah grant us from the lights of Imam al Husayn's nazar salam and shuhadaya Karbala salam that they intercede for us at all times. That they intercede for us because of this love, this ish that we have for them and that to take away badness from ourselves, from our families and from our community. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati wa yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>